Let me show you a step-by-step -step of a clinical case of mine. Okay, so here's a lower molar from sort of beginning the before and the after. And so let's start off with the sealer placement. Okay, so canals are, you're fully instrumented, irrigated, dried the canals, you're good now to obturate. Um, let's first paint the canals with just a little bit of sealer. Again, how much sealer? Less than what you think. Now, at this point when you're putting in your sealer, if you're new to using the gutter core system, this is a nice little, little point to sort of mentally start thinking about, okay, now imagine this as being my gutta core. Okay, so in your mind, this is almost like a rehearsal for placing the gutta core inside the canals. Remember, you're going to put in a paper point, just brush the walls gently with very little sealer. You're not touching the walls of the endo axis. That's all you need to do when it comes to obturating. So you got a little bit of sealer to act as a lubricant. Now we're going to put our uh, carrier uh, based obturation, the gutta core, in the oven. And it takes about 15 seconds or so. So it's, it's not that long, just enough time to maybe just for you to make sure clinically that everything's in order around you, you got what you need with, around the patient. And when the light on the top right side will start to blink, uh, that little circle over there, then it means good, we're ready, it's warm enough, and now we're gonna take out the, the obturator and grab it with the cotton plier. And I'm actually looking at the marker on there, the built-in ruler, that's where I know where to break it off. That's not just an arbitrary me breaking this off. And you see the speed within, within which I, I take the obturator from the tooth, from the oven to the tooth. So just a nice, nice flow within several seconds, put it in the tooth, and you see the speed that I'm putting it inside the canal. So I'm counting to about seven, 8,000 sort of seconds, and we're done, and that's it. So once the, it comes out of the oven, you grab the obturator, carry it over to the tooth, and on you go. It's not as if you have to be rushed. It's about the same time, don't start spending half a minute and, and, and fiddling around with the obturator because it will cool off. But it's simpler than you think. You don't have to get nervous. It's a, it's a paper point. It's just a really beautifully engineered paper point made out of really nice gutta percha, okay? So that's consistent from the oven over to the tooth. I'm gonna show you again this thing uh, later on in the webinar. Um, now, in this case, imagine I wanna obturate or you wanna obturate this mesial root. The reason why I wanna show this particular tooth is because you can see how the mesial canals, they merge apically. So, you wonder, okay, how is this going to operate one canal when the other, other canal is joining it? So what I want you to note is there's a paper point in the bottom canal, so it's the mesial buccal canal here, and you see that the other mesial canal doesn't have a paper point in it. As I put in the gutta percha in the canal, I want you to look at the paper point. I want you to see what happens to that paper point. It actually comes up all of a sudden. And the reason for that is because as it fills the one mesial canal which joins the other, instead of extruding apically, if you have a good apical stop, you, you obturate the one mesial canal, it'll already start to backfill the other mesial canal, and that's why the paper point is going to actually rise up. So let me show you this thing. So here I am. I've got my um, warm um, gutta, gutta core that's just about to come out of the oven. Cotton pliers, never use your fingers. You never use your fingers to carry paper points, right? So why would you ever do that with, with a carrier-based obturation system? So here I am with the gutta core, broke off the handle. Watch the paper point as I'm obturating one of the mesial canals. So see, as I obturate one, all of a sudden the paper point comes out of the other one. Beautiful. I love seeing this. Okay. That's how nicely this fills all the little nooks and voids and all that. And it starts to backfill the other canal. Take out the paper point. Great. We can go in there and obturate the other one. Notice if, as I'm zooming in with the microscope into that unobturated canal or partially obturated canal, you can actually look inside. You see that little white area? That's the obturation already filling the second canal. Okay. So imagine both canals are 20 millimeters length individually. Well, we've obturated one to 20 millimeters, and let's say it backfilled the other one to about five millimeters or so. But you may not know this, and you'd wonder, well, wh what happens now? So now I'm worried if it's not 20 millimeters anymore, and I'm gonna put my gutta cord to 20 millimeters, am I gonna extrude stuff out the apex? The beauty, one of the beauties additionally with the system is that will not happen. Because let's say now that second canal is partially filled as you see over here. And instead of being 20 millimeters long, let's say it's, it's 15 millimeters long. Well, what happens, because now you're obturating with gutta core, which is all gutta percha, it is all warm. What happens is, as you're obturating the canal, you have no idea how far it should go or where it'll stop. Once it meets resistance, let's say in this case at five millimeters, once it meets that resistance apically, then it flows coronally. That's it, it's all warm. It's not as if it's a plastic-based uh, carrier system where no matter what, you're gonna shove that thing in there to fit the 20 millimeters. Now you'd be more likely to push stuff out the apex. 
or if you're using a down pack technique where you have your pre-fitted uh, metal plugger, whether it's night tie or stainless steel, you're gonna pre-fit that thing to about four or five millimeters of the working length, and that's where, again, you're more likely to actually push stuff out the apex because you're gonna shove that thing in there even if it shouldn't be obturated to that length. So, as almost like a safety feature, if that second canal is already partially obturated, don't worry, you don't even have to know if it is or it isn't. Just obturate it to where it'll go. Once the gutta, gutta core reaches that, that resistance, it'll backfill, because it's all soft. So it's a really, really nice system, and I love highlighting here how the paper point just comes out coronally. So we've obturated that canal. You saw how quick that, that was to obturate the canal. No, again, no gimmicks, this is beautifully simple. Um, so how to remove the gutta, the gutta core carrier that's now in the, in the, in the um, um, pulp chamber? This is how you do it, it's very simple. Spoon excavator, sharp spoon excavator. So you're gonna go in there with an apical, into the orifice, apical lateral pressure, it's gonna sort of snap off there. So you need a sharp spoon excavator. If it's not that sharp, then it may not work that easily. But I don't recommend using a hot instrument. Uh, I don't recommend using a high-speed burr or anything like that. Just a sharp spoon excavator. Some people I know would, would heat up the instrument if they want. I don't, um, because at this point I want to let the, the gutta percha, the excess gutta percha, just cool off. Uh, to cool it off, either just let it cool off as you see right here in the video, or you can blow some you know, air from your air syringe if you wish. But you'll notice now how uh, in real time it's, it's cooled off enough where I can just flake that thing off. Really, really simple. Nothing fancy. And, um, and then after that, for, for even sort of more fine uh, removal of the gutta core, I like to use a large round slow speed burr. Very, very gentle sort of polishing of the floor. I'm not here to remove dentin by any means. But you'll see in a moment how I just use that, that uh, uh, large round burr with a slow speed just to, to sort of flake off anything that, that's excess on there. So use whatever system you want. You know, some, I'm not forcing you to use one system or another, but this is what's really worked very nicely for me. So here with a slow speed burr, I'm just barely, barely brushing the floor. Really, really simple. And in the end, this is what we get. So you see on the bottom left uh, image there, nice clean floor. That is obturation with gutta percha. That's it. It's not sealer with a tiny little gutta percha. It is gutta percha obturation in three dimensions. Look how nice, clean, and simple that is. Um, and again, no gimmicks. We just did a molar. And that's with me telling you all the step by step. Imagine you could just fly right through it. It is, it, it's, it's really nice to see that this day and age, uh, I'm not trying to flatter dense ply, but it's really nice to see how dense ply has been able to master things so nicely and thanks to good engineering and materials uh, simplify the, this technique. This is how things should be. If something takes a lot of steps, then not, not that good. If you can achieve the same or better with fewer steps, everyone's life is, is easier and there's less room for error. So um, a few points I just want to highlight. Just wanna, I, I really want to make your life easier. So I've already mentioned this, but if you don't mind, I'm going to highlight this again because I love this feature of the gutta core. So once this, this gutta core comes out of the oven, remove the handle and use cotton pliers. Okay, really simple. And right here, I'm looking at the markers that are built into the gutta core. And break it off, really simple. It's, it's, it's very simple to do. And then you're putting it into the tooth. The reason why I like to do this is because removing the handle, first of all, gives you better maneuverability. Imagine putting in a paper point into a posterior especially, premolar, molar, and using your fingers to try and fit that, that paper point in the canals. It'll never happen. This is why I use uh, cotton pliers. Same thing over here. Once you actually break off the handle and use cotton pliers, now your visibility into the pulp chamber, into the canals is so much better. And on top of that, um, it, it's just so much easier to do everything. So your visibility is easier, your handling of the obturator is so much easier. So just please make your life simple and just break off that handle. It's a phenomenal feature of this obturation system because not all carrier based systems on the market allow you to do this. Okay, and this is a huge, huge plus uh, clinically. So remember, when it comes to this, break off the handle. Why does it come in handy? Because look over here. For me to do, in this case, an upper molar where the patient can't open their mouth that much, look at how easy it is for me to fit that carrier um, into the tooth. The opposing arch, as close as it is, is really not in the way. Not every patient can open their mouth like a hippopotamus and make our lives easier to, to obturate. This is reality here. And, you know, it'd be unfortunate if you you know, you won't be able to do the endo only because the patient can't open enough to obturate. You've done everything else, but you can't obturate enough. You say, that's it, I've done everything, I can't finish this case, you know, on they go. Well, no, this is to make your life easier, to, for you to be able to complete the case. So the other tip that I, I like to give 
is with the rubber stopper. Feel free to use a rubber stopper as you wish. Feel free to use it uh, like you do on a, on a file to, to mark your length. For me personally, I don't even want to use the rubber stopper. It's there, great. It's an option for you to use. The reason is because you've got these built-in these built-in markers. So I don't even use the rubber stopper. It, to me, it's almost as if it's one more thing that's in the way uh, visually when it comes to looking for that little uh, orifice uh, for the canal. So you can uh, cut off the rubber stopper or slide it off nowadays uh, towards the end of the um, the gutta percha, not towards the handle, of course. So as you see in this video, you can just cut it off or just grab a cotton plier and sort of slide it off. But see over here, there's already those little built-in notches. So those three lines you see, the built-in ruler, those are your, your lengths. That's your ruler that's built in. So you can grab this uh, rubber stopper. I, I always remove the rubber stopper. I don't see any need for it. It's there, great if you want to use it, but I bet you the more proficient, the more comfortable you become in using this, and that'll be very quick, the less you'll need the rubber stopper, which, which makes it even easier to obturate and makes you realize even more how much of a, of a small little item you have as an obturator to put into that canal. It only makes your life easier. So um, you could use a rubber stopper or not, but remember, never, never use a ruler. Use the built-in ruler that's, um, that's in a, every carrier. The other little clinical tip, um, if you wish, it, it sort of has to do with a question I often get, which is, Menor, what do I do if there's two canals that are really close to one another, an MB1, MB2, or two mesial canals, as you see over here? I'm worried that if I obturate one, then the gutta percha will overflow into the other canals. Um, that actually used to be more of an issue with the older obturators. Um, I, I got to, again, not trying to flatter them, but I got to give Densply credit for listening to clinicians, wet fingered clinicians like myself saying, you know, I don't like the fact you put too much gutta percha on the carrier. It's overflowing and blocking out the other canals. Well, they actually listen to, to you know, frontline clinicians like, like you and me. And nowadays it's rarely an issue. The amount of gutta percha in every carrier is, is almost perfect for the average length canal. Uh, but still, if you wish, if you're worried that it may overflow, then what I recommend is using paper points to just block the, the adjacent canal. So if, let's say, I instrumented the tooth to, or the canal to, say, a size 40, then I would use a paper point that's maybe a size 80, let's say. It's not going to go to the apex, but it'll just block the orifice. So use large paper points to block out the adjacent canals. Now, if you have this long paper point sticking out of the tooth, you've got to imagine well, this paper point might visually block my view into the, into the pulp chamber. And as I put in my gutta core, the, that, that paper point that's sticking out of the, the, um, the pulp chamber is also going to be in my way physically. So what I like to do is actually cut off that paper point and make sure that the top of the paper point is below the occlusal table. So let me show you in this little bit of what I mean. So you see the paper point um, in the canal, and I'll be sort of pushing it down into the canal, not forcing it down, but just to a level where uh, I cut it so that it'll be below the occlusal table. Now I've got a blocked canal, and visually and physically, there's practically nothing blocking me from being able to put that gutta core into that uh, canal in the top part of the, the um, pulp chamber you see in this picture. So that, that's my little trick. I've heard other people use other things, but for me, paper point, really sweet, simple, easily available, um, and it's, uh, it's, it's my little trick there. Mm -hmm.